أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوفون بالنذر ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا إنا نخاف من ربنا يوما عبوسا قمطريرا أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Dear Mu'mineen and Mu'minat, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Congratulations on the arrival of the month of Sha'ban, the month of happiness for Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim ajma'een, the month in which we celebrate in the very beginning of the month or early in the month, in the third night of the month of Sha'ban, we celebrate and remember the birthday of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the one who was the continuation uh, for the cause and the tool and the wasila of the continuation of the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his brother Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas Salawatullah wa salamu alayhi on the fourth day and Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam on the fifth day of this month Salawatullah wa salamu alayhim ajma'een and in the middle of this month the birth of the reviver the birth of the hujjah the present Imam ajalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the opportunity to be amongst those who are preparing in these days for the Imam in our life, for the Imam of our time, like those who answered the call of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and supported him, helped him and sacrificed the best of what they had, their lives and the blood of their hearts for the sake of the Imam of their time. Imam Hussein alayhi salam. In this occasion, I want to share with Mu'minin and Mu'minat some sections of the words that may be from Imam al-Askari alayhi salam, although the hadith does not specifically mention that the words are exactly from the Imam. It came from one of his representatives, in fact. Imam al-Askari alayhi salam had representatives that set up at the time due to the circumstances and the Imam being in under home arrest or uh, imprisoned in his own home in Samara, the Imam had representatives in different parts of the Muslim world then and one of them came out in the month of Shaban, he said this is the month of Shaban, or this is the third of the month of Shaban. In it there is the birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Sayyid Shabab Ahl al-Jannah, him and his brother being the masters of youth in paradise. He says in this day, fast this day, so I remind Mu'minina Mu'minat to try their best in this month of Shaban to fast as much as possible. Now we are facing a, uh, an epidemic or a pandemic that most of the world is suffering through and many people are now are uh, working at home and they're basically unable to go out. Those who are at home, they can take advantage of the time and in this month perhaps 
learn more about their, their religion, learn more about their journey, recite more du'as with reflection, Qur'an with reflection, and fasting perhaps is easier, especially for those who work outdoors and work in the fields and they work tire, tiring jobs. It is definitely easier, especially as we approach spring and summer. It becomes more difficult when you have to go out, but when you're at home, perhaps Mu'minin and Mu'minat can take advantage of fasting in the month of Sha'ban. Specifically, it is the month of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is highly, highly recommended to fast in this month. And the fasting in this month, according to the riwayat, is purification from our sins. Perhaps this uh, disease that is spreading or this virus that is spreading is one of the junood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless whether it is man-made or uh, it has come through nature without interference either way it is it has come with the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and definitely it has a reason there is a purpose for it there is a hikmah wisdom for it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do anything without a reason or a purpose and with that wisdom in it there is no oppression in anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything has its wisdom and its positive reason in fact we need to search for the positive uh, purpose of what is happening and perhaps learn the lessons through that inshallah uh, fasting this month or this day specifically the third of uh, Shaban in the local calendar for Mu'minin and Mu'minat the uh, the first day of the month was in fact uh, Thursday and therefore the second would be Friday the third would be Saturday so the Saturday is the birth of the day of the birth of the Imam uh, which it is recommended to fast and also to recite this dua this dua that I want to reflect upon inshallah uh, the meanings of this dua some of it uh, as a reflection on the status of Imam Hussein salam and the relationship between the Imam and the revival of Iman and our response to that inshallah also the uh, part of Ziyarat Ashura, inshallah, as a recommendation that is recommended in all the times, I'll come to that, inshallah. Just uh, in brief, what I, I will be, inshallah, reflecting on are part of a dua for the third of Sha'ban, uh, again narrated by one of the representatives of Imam al Askari, alayhi salam, though it has not been clear whether. He is narrating it from the Imam himself or he is recommending those words himself. Although it is highly unlikely it would be from him, more likely it would be from the Imam uh, In there he starts the uh, dua, he says, يُسْتَحَبُّ الصِّيَامُ fi. It is, uh, fa he says it is recommended to fast this day and to recite this dua. He says, Allahumma inni as'aluka. Oh Allah, I ask you, by the rights of the, the one born, bihaqqil mawludi fi hadha, fi hadha al-yawm, al-maw'udi bi shahadatihi qabla istihlalihi wa wiladatih. He says, I ask you, Ya Allah, by the rights of the person who was born or who is born in this on this day, and the one who has been promised or who, whose, uh, whose martyrdom has been promised before his birth, in fact. As we know, Mu'minin and Mu'minat, many of you are familiar with the narrations about the, the birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And one of the occasions in which we uh, as believers are happy to have the birth of the Imam, but we are reminded of the, of the tears, in fact, of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, on the birth of the Imam, being reminded or being told by Jibra'il and other angels, including Futrus, about the Imam and his martyrdom and the shafa'ah that he did for the angels, in fact, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa witnessed that and he narrated that 
the narration of the birth of the Imam itself is, uh, brings tears to the eyes of the believers knowing what the Imam would go through uh, in his life later on and what the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu would uh, expose the Imam to. He says, بَكَتْهُ السَّمَاءُ وَمَنْ فِيهَا وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَنْ عَلَيْهَا The heavens and whatever's in them or whoever's in them and earth and whatever is on it or whoever is on it has shed tears for the Imam. This confirmation may come on some level to some people as exaggerated term or statement that the heavens would cry or the uh, earth and whatever's on, uh, on earth would cry and so on. And some people when it comes to the narrations of the day of Ashura and some of the, what happened on the day, they feel or they may think that some of those occurrences are uh, perhaps exaggerated, um, some of the miracles. Again, I say to the mu'mineen and mu'minat, we either believe or we don't believe. We are we either Muslims, we believe in the Holy Quran or we don't believe. If we believe in the Holy Quran, and we believe in the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shared and reminded mu'mineen and mu'minat. Again, some, some of the miracles we did not know of and they were taught to us through the Holy Quran or told of in the Holy Quran. And some of them were confirmed of previous miracles that previous prophets and nations were sharing and were aware of and they were confirmed in the Holy Quran. If we believe in the Holy Quran, it is not difficult to believe then that the heavens and the earth cry for somebody or for a believer or for the master of youth, master of youth in paradise. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, when it comes to the non-believers, He says and confirms that, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ uh, وما, uh, It is the, these people, the non-believers, those who uh, are in, in opposition of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are the ones who the heavens and the earth are not saddened or they do not shed tears, not the physical tears, rather uh, an expression of grief and its own way of shedding tears and its own way of displaying its grief. It would not have it for those who do not deserve it, obviously. Nonetheless, the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms that the earth would, in fact, this ayah itself confirms that the earth and the heavens would be saddened for them. And as we say, it is more confirmed than for Imam Hussein, السلام, the master of youth in paradise, that the heavens and the earth would cry for him. Then he says, he is eventually in, the, in that dua, he says that he is in fact خَيْرُ أَنصَارٍ صلى الله عَلَيْهِمْ مَعَ اخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ All of him and the Imams are the best helpers and aids to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the time. It is not just at the time of Rasulullah, it is not that just at the time of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, it is throughout the time. They're continuously uh, the best supporters. فَبِحَقِّهِمْ Then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their right, إِلَيْكَ أَتَوَسَّلْ وَأَسْأَلُ سُؤَالَ مُقْتَرِفٍ مُعْتَرِفٍ With their right, I beseech you, Ya Allah, I ask you, and I put them as my wasila, my means of intercession. They are my intercessors. And I beseech you and ask you. The, the asking of one who is confessing, who, is, who knows of his faults. He knows that he does not deserve, yet he is asking with, through your mercy, Ya Allah, yas'aluka al-asmat. 
He asks you protection. Ya Allah, we ask you with the right of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, protection until the day we are buried, until our end. That is the most important thing. A reflection for all mu'mineen and mu'minat. Perhaps some of us, we unfortunately are concerned mostly with our dunya, mostly with our physical world, mostly concerned with what happens to our health, what happens to our physical life, being alive physically. It's a good reflection for us these days specifically that no matter how protective we are, no matter how concerned we are, no matter how anxious we are, no matter how uh, cautious we are, when it comes to death, death it will come to us. Death has, does not spare anyone and does not give anyone a moment more than what is decreed for them. That is for sure. Say nothing will happen to us except for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. When the time of death comes, nobody can gain an hour or a second more than what is decreed for them. And nobody will lose an hour or a second more than what is decreed for them. Everybody will live their lives. Yes, of course, we need to be cautious. We need to be uh, protective of the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us. Nonetheless, we need to be most protective and most concerned, mu'minina mu'minat, about the ending, about our akhirah and how we finish this chapter the chapter of this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his messenger, إِنَّ كَمَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ For sure, after he declares that, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقُتُ الْمَوْتِ Everybody on earth will die. Then he says to his messenger, إِنَّ كَمَيِّتٌ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ You are going to die. In the hadith or some of the responses from Ahlul Bayt, Salawatullahu Salaamu Alayhim, he, they say that if, life was written, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to favor anyone in this world with a long or with a, a, an eternal life, the ones who deserved it were anbiya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most deserving of an eternal life if eternal life in this dunya was important, was significant. Nonetheless, he did not give him that. He did not, in fact, give him a long life compared to many others who lived longer. Imam Hussein alayhi salam did not get to him. Yes, he was martyred. Nonetheless, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to, he would have allowed him to live much longer, even if he wanted to give him martyrdom. He could have given him martyrdom much later. The, the, I'm not saying that we should not be concerned with a longer life. Imam, Imam Zain al-Abidin salam responds to that. He says, وَعَمَّرْنِي Ya Allah, give me a long life with a condition. مَا كَانَ عُمْرِي بِذْلَةً فِي طَاعَتِكَ As long as my life is dedicated, all of it is dedicated for obedience to you. He says, that in, on the other hand, if it's not, then take me to you, Ya Allah. If my life is a place that shaitan is taking advantage of, of a, a land that shaitan is grazing through, then take me, Ya Allah, take me to you. In this dua, we say, Ya Allah, give us the good ending. Make us live as long as we live, day and night, the life of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, and give us the good ending. Now, we all want goodness in this dunya we recite Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasana we need goodness not anything in this dunya good good is godly i want us to reflect on the ziyara which is in fact recommended specifically and known with the name of ziyarat ashura nonetheless as a gift on this month of shaban in the uh, wilada of imam Hussein alayhi salam, his brother Imam, uh, his uh, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salamullah alayhi, and his son Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, the birth of uh, those perhaps deserves 
a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is important for us to understand when there is such a good occasion, it is a time where we can ask for gifts. You know, if you have a king and a generous king and he has a birth of a, of a son, a birth of an, uh, you know, an heir to his throne, it would be most significant time for him and it would be most befitting time for people to come and ask, ask for gifts, ask for uh, forgiveness, pardons and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rahmatan lil alameen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on, this, on these days he was given the birth of his grandson Imam Hussein alayhi salam who was the continuation of his message he says Husseinun minni wa ana min Hussein I am from Hussein my name my fame the religion of Islam is continued through Imam Hussein alayhi salam in other words and therefore on this day we can turn to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for shafa'a we can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on these days to grant us our hajat to grant us our dua one of the best means and a gift from Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alayhi wa alayhim ajma'in is Ziyarat Ashura Ziyarat Ashura, my dear brothers and sisters, is used and useful for both dunya and akhirah. It is literally the, uh, the, the uh, elixir or the remedy for both hajat of dunya and akhirah. You have the, it's the key, the opener for both this dunya and for the akhirah. You want things for dunya, according to the narration from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, recite Ziyarat Ashura. In fact, in the narration, we are told if somebody has hajat, it is not only in, on the day of Ashura and it does not have to be in Karbala. The Imam says, Haythu kunt, wherever you are, wherever you are uh, on earth. If you're in, uh, nearby, you visit, it's all well and good. If you don't have that opportunity, he says, wherever you are, you do, uh, you, you have that tawajjuh, you turn with your heart and your face perhaps towards Karbala, but most significantly and importantly with your heart to Karbala, to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and recite this ziyara has many ma'ani, and our ulama, they confirm our scholars that it is hadith Qudsi, Part of it, it is Hadith Qudsi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nonetheless, the, part that I, the two parts that I want to reflect on are the parts that are dua in that ziyara. In part of that ziyara we recite, we say, Allahumma ja'alni fi maqami hadha mimman tanaluhu minka salawatu wa rahmatu wa maghfira. Allahumma ja'al mahya ya mahya muhammadin wa ali muhammad. وَمَمَاتِ مَمَاتَ مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ Oh Allah, make me or grant me in this maqam, in the state and the status that I am, in the position that I am, grant me the best of the best in this part of the zihara and the dua in this zihara. You could not have asked for anything Above that, mimman tanaluhu, amongst those who are get, uh, uh, given and granted from you, salawat. Salawat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants His Messenger. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to, to do it. The salawat is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to His Messenger. We are asking for that for us in this position that we're in. As we are reciting the ziyara, مِمَّنْ تَنَالُهُ مِنْكَ صَلَوَاتٌ And also, وَرَحْمَةٌ and mercy and forgiveness. And then we say, Ya Allah, O oh Allah, make my life the life of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. So beautiful this part, that I want to live my life the life of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. My dear brothers and sisters, we are concerned again with so many physical aspects of our life. What you and I should be concerned with is how are we living our lives with, with regards to our akhirah? 
How are we living our lives in comparison to the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alaihim ajma'in? Reciting this ziyara with meaning, even when you have hajat, worldly hajat, when you recite it with this focus, that Ya Allah, I want to live like the Prophet and his progeny, even when we're going through, perhaps when we're uh, as a human society, and specifically, and especially as believers, when we're going through this pandemic that we're going through, some are fearful, some are worried, but a believer who wants to live like the Prophet and his progeny would remember, قُلْ لَيْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Say, nothing will happen to us except for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us. Therefore, I'm, again, I'm not saying we do not take our precaution and we, do not, we don't uh, do what is, in, what is dutiful and what is our responsibility, but we do not have fear. There is no fear to, uh, in terms of what could happen and no sadness in terms of what does happen. If something that does happen, that the appearance of it, the worldly part of it may seem as a loss, may seem as harm, when we, when we know it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see it as beauty. This is Mahya ya Mahya Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Mahya ya Mahya Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad is when we have given, we have been given the opportunity of faragh, in other words, free time. Now we don't have work. I take that advantage as Imam, Imam Musa al-Kadhim alayhi salam thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his prison. That Ya Allah, I've been asking you for time to have dedicated time for ibadah. When I'm at an abad with responsibilities, I'm not able to do that. But in this situation, I am. If we are forced to be at home, then it is a great time to dedicate our time in terms of ibadah, acts of worship, seeking knowledge, and reciting dua and salawat and so on. This is Mahya Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Mahya Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad is patience through difficulty, is seeing the beauty in the difficulty. Mahya Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad is that we, whenever we are facing any situation, we want the most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Amir al Mu'minin sallallahu wa sallam he says, I was never never faced with a situation that I had to, with a dilemma, that I had to make a decision between two things, except that I chose what is more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, he would not choose between what is uh, displeasing versus what is pleasing. This is not an option. This is not even something he would consider or be uh, thinking about. Rather, it is a matter of something that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and something that is more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Imam would then go for what is more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Mahya ya Mahya, Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad and the beauty of it is wa mamati mamata Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad that I want my, not just my life but my death, the ending, that I die the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and his progeny uh, I want my death, my ending to be like theirs, while my faith is strong, like I'm, I'm steadfast on my religion, on my principles, regardless of the situation, regardless of what uh, calamities come upon me and what tests I go through in life, regardless of all of that, I want to die, the ending to be the, the ending of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhim ajma'een. Most importantly, and this part I want to finish with, most importantly, we need to, mu'mineen and mu'minat, besides reciting the ziyarah, again, many mu'mineen and many mu'minat, many believing men and women these days, reciting this ziyarah, I'm told, you know, we seek, we ask our scholars, we ask, we look into the ahadith, what is a good remedy for the difficulties. Obviously, we should be uh, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turn, turning to him in difficulty is part of the reason of that difficulty. I'm not saying that we should not turn to him. I'm not saying that we should not ask him. Definitely, that is what we should be doing. What I am trying to say and what we need to focus on, mu'minina mu'minat, is that 
we are not just asking for this dunya. Most importantly, we're asking for akhirah. This ziyara is a reminder of that. Again, mahya ya mahya Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Wa mamati mamata Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And most beautifully, it is put in the end of this ziyara as we go to sujood and we say, Allahumma laka alhamdu hamda shakirin laka ala musabihim. Oh Allah, praise belongs to you. We thank you. The praise of those who are thankful to you. On what? Ala musabihim. The greatest musab, the greatest calamity, and the greatest in terms of physical harm and in terms of worldly uh, trials is what happened to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We recite, Musibatan ma a'zamaha wa a'zam raziyataha. It is the greatest, in fact. And we are praising him and thanking him through that. Therefore, anything that happens to us in this world is little and we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it, ala musabihim. Then, alhamdulillahi ala azimi raziyati. That then we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if we are going through a great calamity, if it is not with regards to their masa'ib, because our greatest masa'ib should be the calamities that came upon the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this part, Allahumma arzuqni. Our concern, our focus, through living the life of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad and dying the death of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, all of that throughout the whole thing is that we, gr we are granted the intercession. Allahumma arzuqni shafa'at al Hussein when yawm al wurud on the day of judgment, when we are gathered on the day of the, the greatest resurrection, on that day we should be concerned about his shafa'a. Shafa'a for, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask in dua, tawassul ya wajihan and Allah, ishfa'a lana and Allah. Perhaps some people in there, they're asking for well-being in this dunya, for health, for wealth, for many other worldly things. The most important thing, Allahumma zuqni shafa'at al Hussein yawm al wurud wa thabbit li qadama sidqin. Make my feet strong. وَثَبِّتْ لِي قَدَمَ صِدْقٍ عِنْدَكَ On your path, with you, مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين With Imam Hussein alayhi salam and his companions, dear mu'mineen and mu'minat, we can be, we can try and we can strive and we should be striving to be like the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam for our Imam. وَأَصْحَابِ الْحُسَيْنِ الَّذِينَ بَذَلُوا مُهَجَهُمْ they gave the blood 